it up. We're going to try and get things going here. I'm Larry Smith, and we're all here because we're concerned the Mississippi River. All right. Oh, there you go. Well, I got everybody quiet and attention focused. Uh, we've got a few things to go over before we get out of here and uh, go do other things. And uh, so the sooner we start, the sooner we uh, get through. It's been suggested maybe we go around and introduce ourselves. Um, probably most of us know each other, but some of us may not. So for those who do not, we'll go for it. I'm Larry Smith from Memphis. And, uh, so let's go with this one. Uh, Daryl Malik Wiley from New Orleans. Scott Faber with American Rivers. Brooks Maris from Marrero, Louisiana. John Lamb with the Minnesota Project in St. Paul. Judy Spasovich with Project Beautiful and Beautiful Illinois. Cindy Goodlack of Rivers Project. Bob Williams uh, Rivers Project. Okay, you know I listened to you. Go ahead and finish that. Oh, Cindy. That's the first one of many, Bob, to tell you to be quiet. I'm Bob Williams. I'm from the uh, Illinois Middle School Groundwater Project. <laughs> I didn't know it. From Mississippi. We've got conversation. Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Gunther. <laughs> Chuck Gunther. From what organization? <clears throat> I teach at St. Louis Community College. I'm Margaret Gilio from St. Louis and the St. Louis Economic Conversion Project. Joseph Campbell from the Gray Island Environmental Protection Committee, Gray Island, Minnesota. Ellen <laughs> Volker. Peter Burns, the uh, Quad City Conservation Alliance, Rock Island, Illinois. Susie Wilkins, currently from Washington, D.C. Elaine Garner with the Southern Organizing Committee. Glenn McCutcheon with the Sierra Club, the West Office of Madison. Don Pierce, Sierra Club, Illinois side of the river here in St. Louis. <laughs> And also with the Grassroots Institute. Uh, I'm Bill Redding. I'm from uh, Sierra Club's Mississippi River Basin Eco Region Program. What are we talking about, Baton Rouge? What are we doing? I'm Mary Lee Orr, Louisiana Environmental Action Network. And I'm Rita Harris from the Mid South Peace and Justice Center in Memphis, Tennessee. And behind the camera, we have. I'm Pat Mahan. I'm with Lean in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Does everyone have an agenda? Would, would you get an agenda? The final agenda is on the black It's similar to one you were to the one you were saying. Yes, I see that. 
Uh, since my job is to tell you about the selection process for the coordinator, and we had a four-member screaming committee. Oh, I'm sorry, four, yeah, four members, I said that left. With four, four members of the steering committee for that selection process last week. And what we did was basically use the job description for the selection process of the candidates. We interviewed, I think it's five candidates. And all of them were excellent candidates. Let me first say that. We were fortunate to have really great people in that process that, that we had to choose from. And um, we used the job description, read down the list. If you look at the job description, you have some stuff to prioritize of what was important on the job description. And we used that to choose a person. So with well, no further to do, I introduce you to your new coordinator. I'd love to, if I could, just say a few words. I'm uh, very thrilled to be here. Some of you are old friends, some are brand new. This weekend, I'm, I'm mostly here to listen. Uh, the Alliance is yours, it's all of ours, and I want to get to know some of you that I don't know as well better to find out what your priorities are for the Mississippi Basin. I look forward very much to working with each and every one of you. I've been in the conservation field for 16 years, the first 10 of which were working on grassroots issues. I've been, uh, very much enjoyed my last six years at American Rivers in Washington, D.C., but it's time to get back to where the action is on the ground, and so I'm very, very excited to be working here and look forward to starting up in a few weeks with all of you to focus in on Mississippi issues. So without further ado, we turn it back over to uh, the great lab. <laughs> uh, no, I, this, gosh, got a big job ahead of you, I hope I and everyone else can help you. Well. Oh, we have, it. Yeah, oh yeah, we have our phone, we have our, we have our number. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot to do. Um, all right, about the business. Everybody, if you don't, if you don't have your stuff, look through it now. Uh, most of us got it in the mail. Uh, we've got a, a number of uh, housekeeping issues to kind of go over. Some of this is just a form of review. Some of it's things we've got to make decisions on. Uh, start with the first one here on incorporation status. Yes? I could just report that we are incorporated in the state of Missouri. Um, uh, it's, uh, our address right now is with the Center for <coughs> Active Citizenship uh, here in, in Arthur Tower's office. He's the agent here. We were incorporated, I think it was in January, yeah. so that's all done. Um, Right below that, we had discussed at the last meeting the 501c3 status was going to be a little easier, possibly, than we thought, and maybe move ahead faster than we thought. So I don't know, was that yeah, it, it was this? filed in January. Uh, we're having e board tonight, seeing which we, the attorney we were going to, we chose to be before, take the lead on that. She has filed. The word to us is that it's filed, it's moved from one very important floor to another very important floor at the IRS. Um, <coughs> It's sitting there right now. It looks in good shape, but what would speed it up is if we have some a foundation or a donor that wants to give us money, and we can write a letter saying, "Okay, we're ready to give the alliance money. We just need to have the five hundred one three says." If we had a letter or two like that, it would speed it up. It's not in any trouble. It's just that yeah. it would speed it up. Yeah, and I'll be the and there are a variety of others. Um, maybe all you know, maybe, I mean, there are some other possibilities. Uh, otherwise, it's moving along, and I will keep in contact with you. Um, right below that, decision on the statement of principles uh, in the materials is sort of a sort of a straw man. This is just a grab. Let's, uh, I don't know if we want to decide on that tonight or not. Uh, or maybe we should certainly, do it. I think we each one of the paragraphs probably needs to look at this. I haven't read through it. I think you want to go through it. Larry? Nothing safe. Sure, I said I was going to talk tonight, but <laughs> here we go. 
perhaps it'd be helpful uh, to talk a little bit about what the philosophy was behind the statement of principles, why, why the alliance felt that we wanted it, uh, just so we get that context for looking at it. Um, this sort of date, well, actually, that sort of it does date back to our Memphis meeting. We had labored long and hard over our sort of our overall preamble statement of truth. Just you know, this who and what we are type statement. And then we had a, a li remember the this big list of things. So the idea of a statement of principles, which would, which would come later. So this and other groups have had this type of thing. So and it was put off basically until now. So we've kind of got to look at this thing again now. Um, and it's, I give you, I'll give you my opinion about kind of what I think it is. So it's almost a restatement of purpose in just maybe more particularized form. Larry, can I go back a little? Yeah, go ahead. Can I offer something up here? Before we got there, we had, I believe, the third meeting, and we had it in Alton, Illinois, for those of you who were there at the Alton meeting. And we, as we were struggling at just why we were here, we looked at the uh, environmental justice uh, statement of purpose, which were 12 points. If I, am I correct? Yeah. Correct. Okay, so we said, okay, then we need a statement of purpose. Not necessarily what was the environmental justices, but we need a, a, a statement of purpose to encompass the diversity of the alliance. So it took us something like, I think, six to six, eight months to figure what we wanted to do. As we were looking at uh, 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 Gulf Coast tenants with Pat, as being a leader along with SOC on this, and, and in consultation with the structure that we at that time came up with, four different uh, committees <coughs> dealing with programs, structure, fundraising, communications, etc. And so this went into projects and programming to bring this forth. And uh, this banded around for a while, and then it fell on Larry's uh, uh, desk. And after all the comments that were gotten into Larry, Larry, uh, I think, turn of the year, that you began on this. <laughs> okay, so the, that's that's the progression of way we came to the statement of purpose. We needed something to back up what we did in Memphis a year ago, last uh, January, uh, right around Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, as why are we here, what we want to do. It was a good statement of purpose, but it needs substance that would hold us together. A binding ethic that, right, that we could uh, always revert back to when we are making decisions that we can hold ourselves true to. And like I said, this is by no I mean, it's a subject of change. It's, it's open for comment. Um, what I, I I had just incorporated the environmental principles of environmental justice in just by reference in four rather than relist all of them. I tend towards brevity in case you hadn't noticed this is the way I do things. So that's just me. But I noticed, uh, I had a couple of different examples of other groups' statement of principle. And, you know, they, and they range from uh, very long to overly, overly brief. It looked almost like a statement of purpose. Yeah. So I just struck for something in the, in the middle. Uh, I feel like environmental justice is a big part of what we are, what makes us different than, uh, we, we are of the evolving world of, you know, world activism. And so I think that's why I wanted that that in there in part four and five pretty much I tried to put that flavor of environmental justice into that. Um, but anyway, like it's not uh, not a sacred cow by any means, so let's all kind of chew on it a little bit. Not all night, but <laughs> you're, you're a better reader than I. <laughs> yes. Since you brought that up. Yes, baby. <coughs> Does anybody want to volunteer? I'll read one. You read two. Okay. If it's nice. Well, we cooperate. Okay, go. They need to be read. They need to be read. Yeah, they need to be read yeah, let's, let's, should read. we take one at a time? And then if anybody so has like any comments or a word verb that changes, if you can feel free to speak up rather than just we'll just sit here. Let's just do one at a time. Is that okay? Are we ready? Read it. Okay, read it. Y'all ready? Yes, we're reading it. Number one, the Mississippi River Basin Alliance, MRBA, is founded on mutual <coughs> trust for the individual differences of people and the uniqueness of their communities. We actively foster and encourage diversity of background, experience, culture, and perspectives 
which share a common respect for the earth and are symbolized by the Great Mississippi River Basin. Number two, we value the resolving of conflict through open dialogue and debate. We also value the clarifying and strengthening process of such interaction. <laughs> Number three, we seek to learn from and integrate those value systems that society has mistakenly set forth as contradictory, including economic and environmental benefit, traditional and emerging lifestyles, rural and urban perspectives, <coughs> advocacy for communities, and community self-direction. We see areas of commonality between these values and do not wish to perpetuate dualistic thinking. Number four, the MRBA is committed to the principles of environmental justice by working to create a prosperous and sustainable society where no one segment of that society is sacrificed by bearing the brunt of senseless and destructive environmental and societal burdens created for that society to succeed. Number five, our respect for community includes the belief in protecting the natural environment so that future generations are protected by actions taken now and in recognizing the mistakes of the past which must be corrected today. put a couple of commas in number four. That's totally wrong. <coughs> or whatever. Later. What are we supposed to do? Just listen or comment? We're supposed to comment. Yeah, comment. <coughs> what, what do we mean exactly by dualistic thinking? Jobs versus the environment. Uh, either or. you got to have this, you can't have that. I, that's my spin on it. Mm -hmm. that's, so I'm not talking about jobs. The environment will save you because it's jobs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Risk assessment. Yeah. Labor. Yeah. Yeah. Labor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're over there, I'm over here. You'd think that we might, a lot of my folks really wouldn't understand that. I mean, you have a, a way that we could put it that would have that. Change the word to keep the meaning. Change the word to keep the meaning, yeah. Because I think some of our, our folks might. Do you understand? You know what I mean? I, I yeah. mean, is that so? Does anybody? Could we think yeah, of something? Or we want? Do we want? Or, to more layman out? terms? I don't think we should do that here. I think any change. Yeah. Oh, we okay. like Larry it to Larry. Oh. Come up with another playing word or either uh, in a concert with our coordinator. Sir, sir. Okay. Are we right here today primarily thinking of public relations or technical accuracy or both? And what the little readers? Well, I like everything that's in here. But it would be hard to make this sell easily. I mean, it's a, it's a bunch of words. To, to who? Who are we trying to sell to? Whoever we're, whoever we're trying to capture their imagination fast. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I know we went through a long process and got all this out, and I think it's all good. It's all, it's all <coughs> great. I'm wondering if there's a way to, uh, you know, make it more capsulized. Well, you're covered. It's really, yeah, well, I mean, that's, it's almost contradictory because the purpose statement kind of is that. And this is like, okay, that's not, I mean, no, I know what you're saying, but that's kind of the only thing that you have a cover sheet with the purpose in this, like, I understand. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's the kind of way to do it. This but, is yeah. the principles by which we're going to talk to each other. Right? So this is more technical business. accuracy rather than it's like the embodiment relation. of the purpose. <laughs> that's a sin well, by which we, uh, right. People just want to know in depth more about who we are and why we, function the way we do, I think they can look at these five statements of principles. I think, I, think look, I think it tells a lot about who the organization is, and mm -hmm. what they're about, having a principle. That's glad you brought that up, because you just see all this through the light of the purpose mm -hmm. statement, which is basically on top of this, okay. you know, both physically and philosophically. Okay. I, does every, my question is, does everyone have the purpose? I know we have it, but I mean, do you have it here okay. with you? Do you have it in front of you? Yeah, and that would be helpful, I think, if you could see that. And then look at this as a further clarification of the purpose. No, I forgot the blue notebook. I got a couple of copies. Well, anyway, that's shorter, right? The, the Let me. Yeah. I'm going to read. I'm going to read the purpose statement for everybody. Please. I'm going to read the. This is the purpose statement. And it for came everybody. before. And, and give them the uh, chronological. It came before the purpose. Correct. Um, okay, I'm going to read this out loud. This is the purpose statement. 
for everybody, okay? I'm going to read the purpose statement. And remember, this we sweated over this long and hard in Memphis. And so or this is kind of what we interpret these principles through. The purpose statement. The Mississippi River Basin Alliance is an interactive network of diverse organizations and individuals whose purpose is to protect and restore the ecological, economic, cultural, historical, and recreational resources in the basin and to eliminate barriers of race, class, and economic status, status which divide us in the quest to achieve these purposes. So that's kind of is there anyone who hasn't seen the statement of purpose? I lost sight of that. That's, that's, I didn't know if this was replacing that or what. No, 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 no,
people want to deal with it, but it should be out. I'm glad you brought it up because I hate to see it come up. People have maybe uh, another view of it later on. I just I think thought there needs to be more five, I thought all five of them spoke to the environment, the living environment, but not narrowly defining the environment. Okay, but when you're an environmental group, that should be very evident out there. Yeah, and that's, and that's a big question. But well, I think we need to represent both ends. What do you mean, both, both human and environmental? Environmental and social justice. Environmental justice does not separate the environment and the people. Right. There's no separation. Exactly. Why are we separating <laughs> the environment we live in and the, and the people that live in that environment? They are one and the same. What's good for the environment is good for the people. Because we talk about a, 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 a revitalization of Mother Earth. As my Native American brothers say, constantly about how to live with the Earth. You live in harmony. So I understand the separation philosophy is. You know, I, I just came from a meeting down in, in New Orleans down there with some of the EPA and uh, American Risk and stuff. We were there and we had our little, you know, mm -hmm. separate the little group this way and that way and everything. And everybody's in there doing their thing, they're going to rewrite the EPA standards and the laws or the regulations and stuff. They can make it and right. someone said, you know what's really ironic about this? The only specimen or the only species on the earth that creates waste is human beings. No other specimen or species creates waste. Only human beings. And I told them at that after they made that comment, I said, I'm glad I'm not a human being. Well, that people came here for many years and tried to say, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth said, they're human beings. <laughs> Otherwise, we weren't up until that time. <laughs> And we weren't polluting up until that time either. <laughs> Damn clean. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever, you know, was it Elizabeth or Queen uh, oh, Isabel? Isabel. 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 These people are, these are human beings now. They were cut, was it? Yeah. Like they were cut. We weren't human beings before that. Uh, you know, it, it's ironic. If you were going to make a statement or something in that aspect to say that the human beings should stop doing what they're doing to the river, period. I mean, that's before before we lose the ecosystem that's there. Mm -hmm. There's an ecosystem that's been there for many, many years, and there's still some places on the Mississippi River that still have that. Little niches where stuff is still going on the same way it was. And if it's allowed, if, it, if the pollution stops, on the river, it just it'll heal itself. It'll 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 start to grow. Those little pockets of hidden places will begin to grow. But if we can <coughs> add to the pollution and kill it, the little pockets there will be nothing left. There'll be nothing left. It's it's sad. You agree with that, don't you? Right. <laughs> how do you what put everybody's that? trying to say is uh, to mention the river more mm -hmm. in the state. You know. Bob started me thinking, it's not love of Earth that you consider concerns. We won't survive without it being in a good condition. And a few years ago, there was a meeting of the world's great religions to look at environment. And the Jewish statement that came out of that is an old one. That the Earth is a lifeboat. If we want it to survive, we all have to pull together. And that's the kind of thing I think we need. The earth is essential to us. That's why we want to save it, not because we want to hug it. Yes, go on. Can you sum this up in all these philosophies in one word? Or two? <laughs> <laughs> one or two? Maybe fast or English language. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, what? Um, See, I, uh, I, you know, it's not fair to put this back on there. The fact that, uh, 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 what do we want? And how do we want it? In what form? Oh, wait, clear. Uh, uh, it, we're simply talking about philosophy. And That's what I'm saying. It's way clear how the, the, what everyone seems to be saying. That's what I was asked a lot. I think clear. people have been consistent in what they're saying. They're saying it in different uh, Yeah, tests, I, I, I think everyone's saying it's close to the same thing. Yeah, well, there is some agreement. I mean, the environment, the environment, the earth, the, everything, everything that populates it is all one subject and all one thing. 
politics, religion, economics. There's, there's no, there's no, I mean, it's an intentional blurring of the line. Because it's what, I mean, that's, you don't have one without the other. So we, we need to put more ecological senses as far as words in this to make it mean to who? If, well, I guess, uh, do we need to put that in the language? What about some mention of, say, Earth human community? But we're focusing on the Mississippi <coughs> River Basin Alliance. We're not focusing on the Earth. We're, we are, but we we're going to go out and ask for money. We're going to go out and, and 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 recruit people on a set of principles that are should be based on the Mississippi River Basin, well, not well, the Earth. We're not yeah. an Earth-wide organization. All right, now, that, now, now that's now that's fairly well clarified. I, I was careful with that. Because of tying together these broad views, but then as a share with a common respect for the earth and are symbolized by the great Mississippi River Basin. So it's, uh, that's fairly clear that that's the focus here. Um, that was the only reason to do it. It's had the, first, the first paragraph, it had our name, what we are. And then, uh, I, thought, I, don't know, I thought that was fairly clear. Symbol, symbolism. It, it seems to me that we don't really need another statement that, in a sense, uh, is very similar to our strategies and our purpose. What I see this is, is fine as a third thing in this trilogy over here, mm -hmm. but I think what it what it needs, instead of saying a draft statement of principles, which everybody who reads it isn't going to have us explain all you know right. why we're doing all this. I think you know I think what this says to me is would be more like a draft statement of uh, philosophical principles of interaction, how we're going to. Um, deal with one another, which is uh, not as broad as, 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 we're not trying to replace this over here, this is just a further clarification of how we're going to act in communion or, or community as an organization philosophically amongst people. And so the fact that there, you know, there's, there's river kind of weaving in here, little tributaries here and there, but that's not the important thing. That's not what I see this, you know, there's no sense in re replacing this. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So maybe what we need are some modifiers up at the top so that, we ex so that we're understanding what in the world this thing is. Mm -hmm. With an attitude that we may know it around this table, but mm -hmm. there are other people, if they come up on this, uh, they may be lost. And we want people to come up on it. Yeah. Is this Neil Andre going to be here? He was supposed to be here tonight, and okay. he thought he'd come in tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I think an acid test for this would be to hand it to him and see if he understands it. You talk about the dolphin defenders. Yeah, and a very. In other words, a young person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's I think important they understand and agree with. I don't think they'll understand a lot of this, a lot of the philosophy that's in here. But I think, I think we've got the modifiers that Don talked about at the head of this. You don't think that would make a difference? It would if it was in trilogy with these other two. Exactly. I don't. I don't say that it's necessary. You know, the test isn't me or you. The test is whether these young people that we're going to pass this on to can understand it. Well, well I would say definitely if you hand this to somebody, they're not going to. Somebody on the idea. screen is going to say what we itself. are really mean by this. Not by itself. Right. But in concert with the other, the purpose of the purpose of statement, the purpose right. statement, it, it, it all flows. But you might need to have a paragraph to explain why we but need to do this. What he's talking about, somebody may come to see. Each one of the documents has to stand by itself, and if we, if we, if this is not here, then people could look at this and get a general idea of what's going on. Be you eight or eighty, or maybe some other people. Well, I won't do that. This, unless, but unless you make this the second page right. of the purpose and right. strategies, or put so a, you or make it a unit, or put a paragraph to explain why we feel we need this thing. I, I think the dog's correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's the same page. You like it what? No, so it'll fit. There's no. I mean, this is short enough. I mean, just, just, you know, it, it, there's not going to fit it. Keep on one sheet. Just well, what about having having yeah. like a, a, a line? Maybe because Lara was talking about how he could divide this up and switch certain parts around. But maybe have like a, a sentence or two at the very beginning that would mm -hmm. be like an overall statement, you know, blanket statement, and then have the others listed as bullets underneath. Is that similar to what y'all are talking about, rather than the numerals? Or 
The new one didn't bother me one bit. Dots would be better. I don't think if you, I think if you have if you have the word S on the end of principles, if you don't you have some kind of a dot or mm -hmm. even if they're not numbers, then you don't know where are other principles are. Yeah. Are they buried in here somewhere? No, the, dat the data work. It just the, the dots are better. If than you numbers, take the numbers out, there's no question of well, what's the order. Then you well, don't we, we have a couple of people. Uh, 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 Margaret, what do you think about what yeah. we have? Are you saying this? You, you weren't about the process. This, these five principles, when you read them, uh, is there confusion? Do you have the statement of purpose in front of you? Would you like to look? Oh, um, yeah. And also, purpose statement. Let's show the purpose statement. Because, purpose statement. Purpose statement. because yeah, well, you should have gave us the purpose statement. Believer, I agree with you. I would like uh, the young people to be able to understand uh, what we're talking about, what we're about. I think that our young people have to be educated mm -hmm. also that, to that way of life and uh, living within their environment. You know, and right now, they, you know, most youth are not even educated like that. So it will be foreign to them the whole philosophy. But I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's a reason not to move forward. Mm -hmm. I think it's a reason to reach back and educate. One of the missions of the Mississippi <coughs> Grace Alliance should be to educate. And I hope our, coordinator, our new coordinator does push in that direction of educating our youth because it's very important. Well, not, don't put it all on the youth. No, no, I mean, I mean <laughs> or her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it tells us what to do. We have that one before, so I get to use it. Get to use it. <laughs> you know, there's, there's some holy empty hands. <laughs> okay. I mean, just even a sentence, like the purpose, referring you back, the purpose of the Mississippi River Basin Alliance is embodied in the following principles. Mm -hmm. What do I guess? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to write uh, something out. Okay. Right. 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 I can comment about right. the uh, number two here. When uh, I, I had a little trouble visualizing uh, where, where this conflict would arise, whether it be internally or, or with, with external groups and so forth. And what I think you mean is uh, in, in resolving conflicts concerning the solution of environmental problems. Mm -hmm. same time as the statement of the earth. Yeah. You, you, read, you read that statement up on top and it's about without regard to class, etc. I think that that thing is tied up with this, that same philosophy. The conflict mm -hmm. might arise from environmental racism or something like that. Or the injustice of it. As, as I remember, that's kind of where we were coming from at that time. Right. In other words, the haves get more and the those that don't have get less, that sort of thing. Yeah. Especially in Mississippi where you have a conflict of farming and uh, other culture, pesticide use, so on and so forth, and yet the, uh, the people who live downstream that be drinking water. That, that, that's a constant conflict, and we hope to resolve that kind of conflict. That's the reason it's worded like that, which is a, which is a, a man-made problem, um, female-made. Or whatever you want to say. All, all, all the conflicts of the uh, corporate <laughs> human activism. There you go. Human <laughs> <family. laughs> <Family. laughs> <laughs> Republican. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> if, if I'm not mistaken, number two and, and probably number three come straight from my board of directors' statement of principles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and there, that when they wrote number two, they. Um, that was that, that was just their way of saying it's really healthy to argue all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because you learn something while you're arguing. And that's really all that's all number two. It's funny, that's the way I took it, although it, I think it has meaning just it's just as valid the other way. But when it, when I when I talk it I think about these meetings and how we go back and forth on things. It's healthy, very healthy and it clarifies things. I want I want I had I wrote up something that might be considered for up above this. To achieve, and this is just off the top of my head, but only to achieve the alliance's purposes, certain philosophical principles are presented below. These principles guide how we will interact with one another as we act out our strategies. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like it too. Nice and simple and clear. Mm -hmm. To the point. Did you tell them that? 
How long will the first write? <laughs> if he didn't, I'm sure you're going to come over here and correct his paper. <laughs> oh, I'm just a name tag. That's a spell check. Well, no, yes, you did. You drafted it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need the draft anything. I think we have what we need well, here. I, mean, I didn't write it down. So oh, <laughs> he's got it written down. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I will. <laughs> Can we go on then? No, no, we can't go on. Oh. I'm going to be accepting principles with the uh, preamble. Uh, oh, sorry. Opposition? Sergeant Junior, just a point of clarification. You mean with the discussion? With, with the discussion with changes. All like the changes that we've all Yeah, the one on uh, remove the numbers. Yeah. yeah. Right, let's go ahead. Remove the numbers. And this okay. Just put dots instead uh, of Dualistic. Get rid of that. Can, can I follow up a little bit uh, the, to continue the discussion that Leroy raised? Because I think he's got a good point that um, we're, this almost sounds like legalese or something. It does. And, um, and I wish it did sound more like kids talking to one another or, or the way we would talk on the street. I don't know. I mean, that would take a lot of wordsmithing to change it. But, for example, that number two, I mean, why does, why, maybe it would be more understandable to, to just say we value arguing because you learn things when you argue. Or, and the perpetuate dualistic thinking is really, um, we don't like to back ourselves into simple us versus them arguments or something like that. Cool. But, see if y'all had worked that out in your uh, doctor, you're who would have to do it. Yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, this well, is your fault. You put them in the list. It's your fault. It's not my fault. This is your document. Yeah, this is your document. This is your fault. You take it. Maybe John can yeah, go back sorry. and get his documents straightened out. And then bring it back to us. We can modify ours. I got a suggestion for number three to, to clarify the dualistic thinking. I think if you add the word such after perpetuated, it makes it very clear to me uh, because it's all the dualistic thinking is really described up above it there, all these, these dual uh, alternatives there. Um, let me change my command here a little bit. Are we, well, do we not want me to change this word dualistic or are you comfortable with that? Change the setting such to it. I see a problem with that. Who's having a problem? Mary Lee. I'm sorry, I'm back to the fact that somebody asked what we meant by dualistic. When I was a federal bureaucrat, writing for stuff on the people on the hill, we were always admonished to write at an eighth grade level. You wanted them to understand it. And part of what we're going to be doing is trying to get the people on the hill to understand. <laughs> Dualistic thinking will not cut it. <laughs> if we can find another way to do it. Get a point, leader. <laughs> I like it. If you put what you meant in parentheses after it, it would help. It would be easier. C table would do it. I think it's very important that we are we're we're writing this for our understanding with an eye that we know that we're we're, we're talking to people that uh, are going to shape what we want to do that they can understand. It. But I like to believe what you said about the thing with the young people being able to understand that even though some of the words need to be for reach, they need to climb for them as well. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's the best use of our time to sit here and rewrite no. this. No. Well, and and I, I, I would propose that maybe we get a committee of two or three folks. That's to Sierra do that. Club for you. Well, we did this mm -hmm. a three and a half. Well, I, well that, that, that we either, you know, we go up or down, but, you know, we're going to sit here, we can wordsmith this thing all night. And, and, you know, I, I agree with the principles. I agree. And we do like to argue. So, you know, we need to, but we need to move forward, and we're either going to vote this thing one way or the other, or we're going to have a committee to rewrite it. I know? think we're very close to having well, something. Well, then, let's, well, then let's come back tomorrow with some rewriting. Okay. So you're on the committee, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a suggestion. I would have been about to bag it up. Tell you what, tell you what. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm going to find another word for dualistic. I'm going to remove these numbers. we got this preamble on this thing. And, 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 and we have a first and a second on the floor. Yeah. 
Yeah, this, I'll, this I'll call the question. You know, if that, if we, got a, we got a first and a second. I'll call the question to, for a vote. Almost in flavor of chocolate pudding. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and up or down. And, and talk about it tomorrow. I mean, do a read. Oh. Do a no, read I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, you know. Well, but I I'm wondering, is, is it simple enough? I mean, if I we want it simple it enough for eighth grade, if we want it simple so that it's clear and people can understand it, does everybody think it is simple enough? I think with the word such, like he was talking about, and just put parentheses of I.E., mm -hmm. this versus this, this versus this, this versus this, then we'll know what we're talking about. It may not be the most, you know, Madison Avenue type glamour thing, but we can agree on it. We can tinker with it later, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. going to be not it's flashing right. out their head so of everything. Mm -hmm. It'll work. Maybe that's going to make a motion to it's a draft that it can be changed. There you are. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. So why did you do that earlier, Jill? People, as long as it's a draft, like I send out the purchase statement all the time. From now on, I would send both copies. The same product would be the same thing. It would be part of the same document. Right. Just drop it in the bar. Explain it. Come up with something better, stronger. Put them on the same page for that history. Right. Put it on the back with the purpose there. I'll call the question. Let's vote on it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? One. I like to know uh, why you yeah. want just, just to get it out. Of why do I oppose? Yes. Well, I'm a new kid on the block here, and looking at it, and I see everything I see says interim. Your organization just in formulating, and you uh, achieved that status where you are now taking on a permanent staff. I think the first purpose statement is adequate and understandable, simple and to the point. I think this statement of principles is something that can be clouded and kicked around. I don't understand the damn thing. I, I can read into it, but I can read into it uh, differences between people in the boxing or football business. It doesn't tell me everything to ecology or river or the basin. And uh, I just think that now you're developing to that point where you have a staff, you have time to formulate this better and reflect it rather than taking a vote and putting it in concrete now. I think you're still growing. Well, nothing we do is in concrete ever. We don't know that. Well, let's let's stay with what Joe said and, and keep it keep that dra word draft on it, and it, we can fine tune it later if, if we need to. In the meantime, move forward with something we got. Yeah. 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 But I think I think Larry's done. It. You were the one that did the start, right? Well, I mean, it wasn't. But I think that's a good start, and I think he hears what we're saying now, and knowing it's a lawyer, he ought to be able to write his words. Hey, come up with something. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you something. <laughs> I was watching a television program. It was about Bill Wallace. He, he was the guy that did uh, some stuff for DuPont down in the uh, Altoona, Hossaford, down in this area. He worked for DuPont and stuff. And he had written out some reports. And he made the reports out, and they were negative to the company. And so the company, when, when he handed in the reports, he said, they sent them back and said, no, we can't do that. And they stamped draft on it. And when they put draft on that document, that meant that <clears throat> if anybody wanted to write in and ask for it for a Freedom of Information Act and get that document because it had draft on it, it can't be sent out. Okay? So until it's permanent and it's a final draft or a final document, it never really gets sent out with anything. And, and like you were saying, that first one, the purpose and stuff that's on there, as long as you have that word draft on there, it's you know, it's not a real document <coughs> because it's not done yet. But it, 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 is that a company position? Or you learned that. that well, yeah, you went to the legal. It's a legal, legal, work it's it. a yeah, legal, legal problem. It's a legal, legal work on it. It's a legal thing. If, if uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission yeah, has somebody come in and do a study and there's thing, things in there that 
that they don't want the public to know yeah. about. They stamp a draft, and, and, and even if that person tries to release that, he can't release it even then. Okay. That's, it just ties their hands so they can't get it out. You can't get it out to nobody. As long as it's under that draft form. Did we just vote on the, did make it a draft, or did we just vote on it and make we it We just draft. voted on the document. Why would we need, anyway, why would we need a statement of purpose? If, uh, pardon me, not uh, a statement of principle. If we got a statement of purpose as everyone agreed to it, who are we doing the, the statement uh, of principles for? If everyone agreed to it. It would be something, that, it would be something that maybe some company would want to hear, you know, say, well, what are you here? What are you going to do? I'm thinking fundraising. For fun. I think to help out the coordinator. I mean, if a company, then maybe we should cross that bridge when the company asks for it. Uh, we have one here. But I actually think the principles muddy the purpose statement. The purpose statement is much clearer and simpler. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm this thinking other the same thing. We're talking out. about uh, the growth of the alliance not being the people in this room here, not limiting when people ask for inclusion in here. Not that, uh, that there isn't. A, there should be something. There should be a it's criteria. Well, it's a principle. Yes, you know. that people can say, yes, I can sign on to this. But, but, but they can't opt out at the last. Now, the statement of principles is beautiful philosophical, but you can interpret this right down to the last sentence here. And say, well, I thought here, the statement here. But when principles are laid out for a reason. See, what I think is somebody that comes from the local Audubon Society, or maybe not the Audubon Society, the local bass club, or some of the some of the other groups are really interested and they look at these principles. <laughs> and then they're gonna look at this and say, what are we what are we what am I joining here? Am I joining a, an environmental club or am I joining a people club? Well, it's, well I know, but, but the purpose saying, statement de defines <coughs> all of that better. Well then I mean, these it's can a wider never go out unless they're on the same page because I think this is I think this clouds the water then. I agree. If these could get separated, because I think some people would misinterpret <coughs> our, our, which I've said before, it has to have the strong environmental, because some people want, that's why they're coming into this group, is the environmental issues. Now, we bring them into the group and we face the people issues, but some yes. of them will not know that when they walk in to join the right. group. And we want them to be a part of us, but we can't even get to the people issues without getting them into the group to. And doing. you can bring them into the group with the purpose statement the way it is, I well, think. But well, when you bring the statement of principles in, it's a different thing. If people, if it's more people, political. Or if you're going to send this to Bass, if that's your target or other groups, this might actually scare them away. I think you're right to say that. But, the, but you could send the purpose statement, and you can. <laughs> and if fine. they couldn't buy into it, that would be... It gets back to what Bill was saying. Who, who is this for? If you, if you agree that it was just for Alliance members, that would... Well, and Bass sometime might be an alliance member. So it yeah, they would be an alliance member. For, I mean, they should be a bad alliance member. But see, member. then it, it gets into other areas as well because the, the uh, with statement of principles, there are other things that uh, that's part of housekeeping that need to be brought up also. We can we can we can uh, we can go round and round on this. Um, I think. Uh, uh, Joe, when Joe was talking about this is draft, this is interim, it's, it's still interim, because I still believe now, after listening to a couple of comments, that we probably need some more thought put to this. Mm -hmm. and, and the thought in the terms of understanding that the shelf life of anything we're going to do would be maybe three years or so to be revisited as necessary. But uh, I envision uh, folks from every quarter of the society of the basin <coughs> at one time or another uh, are wanting to become a part or maybe being asked to become a part of the alliance. And
other, and, and, and it, we've really come a long way, and, and I know it's, it, this is really difficult, but I think tonight, you know, and maybe we can bring it up tomorrow, but tonight we're just, we're really, in the interest of time, asking for an okay from this committee for, uh, to designate a young person on the Alliance Board to work out those particulars with, with folks who work with young people and people who have some real definite opinions about who those people should be. Yes. You know, I'm Okay. Well, you could ask questions. Yeah, but she had a question. She had a question for you. I have a problem with voting on it because, like this gentleman over here, asked a question about transportation and getting a person there, not knowing whether or not the board members will will be funded for their trips to meetings and stuff like that. Um, if I don't know if it might be, it might be more feasible to say a an, a, an adult or a young adult working with youth uh, that could represent the interest of youth on the board. But I, I just have a problem with just saying we will put a young person, and it might be a young child that you know would have to be transported with an adult, a guardian, or something like that. I just think that these are things we need to think about before we just vote this in and then someone choose someone that's 10 years old to be on the board. Well, I think, Rita, in all fairness, and, may, and maybe I'm not really being clear and I apologize, I think those folks that set criteria, those are the things that are going to have to tackle and, and address and come back to us and have us approve it. I mean, you know, I don't think that we have in mind, and, you know, all due respect to Bill, an eight-year-old that their parent has to drive them. I think we need to have, you know, a young person and that the committee has to come up with the criteria, you know, high school, or college or whatever it is they come back to the committee with. So I recognize your concern. I think it's very valid. But I, I think that's more specific and we're more thinking about it. If, am I right? I mean, because I, I want, I understand what Rita's saying and it is certainly a valid concern. Maybe we can rephrase the. Let me, yeah. you had a question for me. I, as I see this, is a young person, and just as a lot of us are representing more than just ourselves. But a young person, and th there are scores of high schools across this country in the watershed that are that are working on. Uh, my son is actively involved in testing the water on Deer Creek, which is a creek here for the Henry Shaw Academy at, Shaw, at Shaw's Garden. That's just one example. There, in, in, in the Henry Shaw Academy, there's 12 kids testing different creeks. There's lots of that going on in the country. So one child would would be in communication with other children, and that child would represent those children and the watershed testing that they're doing, but that child would be on the board, but he would be in communication with youth. Just That's imagine that. your son sitting here tonight listening and involved with us. <laughs> no, we've gotten away from, we have structures. I, I like to ask, uh, 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 the folks, folks, Larry's on the structure committee. That's why Larry's taking this on to bring something by the, back to the body whole. See, and, and I, I think that uh, there are people here uh, who have forgotten totally about the four structures that we put together. <coughs> and I think that maybe we need to revisit that and say where things lay out. And everything we lay out here, we should put a committee on it. Right. Because these, these responsibilities were given to committees, am I wrong? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, you're not wrong. You're right. Correct. Right. And, and, uh, and yeah. I think we're going round and round and round. We can go round and round the other way here. So, so I'm saying is that on the board and then well, I think it should go said. back. What everything said. This is something that needs to go back to the structure. Right. It needs to go back to the structure right. committee it's and need to be, be tough. coming out. It's going to be really tough. I've got a comment. I'm work with the I mean, You're going to think it's wise after it covers the way I feel. I'm doing a paper on the destruction of the environment in the Mississippi Valley. In 1827, an ornithologist working near Frankfort, Kentucky, counted, estimated, over a period of six hours, 
a flock of passenger pigeons that was two and a quarter billion. This is with a B. Birds. Big stamp. That's one flock. How old were they? Huh? How old were they? How old were they? Yeah. <laughs> Birds are the oh, they weren't a thousand. <laughs> Thirty oh, years later. Know. Thirty years later, there were only scattered individuals left. Mm -hmm. In the time we've been horsing around in the last three years, the equivalent of 225 million pigeons have yeah. died. Now, there's nothing that dramatic that we can look at anymore because we've done so much damage. <coughs> but there are things that we're not seeing that are going down the tube. It's Kids came in, and and they were doing everything that the grown-ups were doing outside in a mock session. <laughs> and and someone would come in and watch what's going on. Then they'd go out and talk about what they were doing inside there. And they came in, and all the kids, when they heard everybody, when a runner that came in there and hear what's going on, went outside. And said, Something's going on in there. They're fighting. And the kids came in and said, you know, "We thought you." or whatever, maybe one of the youths could have written something so simple that everybody could understand it. Uh, and that's exactly what it is. It's sometimes we're too technical with things, and we start thinking about how someone else is going to look at it, and some kid can just come up and say three, four words, boom, and the answer is there. So I believe we should have some youth on here, <coughs> on the board, or at least helping us, no, making decisions, board. because it's their the future we're looking at. And then what we need is probably, instead of just one, we need some broken into some different uh, uh, geographical area so that if we're meeting in a particular area, that person that's representing from there can be there. If there's someone from here or someone from wherever you are, they'll be there and you won't have that problem with their travel. Okay, so what so I'm hearing is everyone philosophically believes we should have a young person. So can we agree on that? Yes. Let's just take baby steps, okay? So. Could someone? Yeah. Say, <coughs> okay, how about Scott's motion? Is anybody?
So we just need to look at them and decide what one we, what one we want to go with. This is a logo. It just <laughs> is used for letterheads and, and business cards and maybe buttons and something that we... It became fairly obvious tonight to me that maybe we need to say somewhere that Robert's rules of order will prevail. We okay. called for the question and we totally ignored it. No, we didn't. I, I, we, had, I we had some questions. We had questions that needed to be addressed. A vote on that wasn't appropriate just by calling a question like that. So it wasn't ignored. There was a question before I heard we called it, the question. Truthfully, but then Rita said she had something she really needed to share, and I felt like we needed to. Uh, I think we resolved it, but yeah, your point is well taken. We need to try to be To the brochure bill while we're doing yeah, that's the last yeah. thing about the, 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 the